Okay, here we go. Shall we pray and ask God to speak to us? Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Uh, thank you for this Saturday. Uh, thank you for this day, the 25th of April, 2020. And even as we study your word today, as uh, believers across the globe are in a lockdown, on an important subject, I pray that you will speak to us. Lord, I pray that we will incline our ear to messages that will reveal exactly what your word has to say. I pray that during these days we will stay away from messages which um, merely tell us what we want to hear, but rather, Lord, listen uh, with a sincere heart and an obedient spirit, messages that, Lord, that will build our inner man, messages that will make us more like Jesus. In Jesus Christ, in my prayer. Amen. All right, welcome. Uh, you see, the day I got married, I got married in the year uh, 2001, uh, July 9th, 2001. I remember the, the wow, the promise I made to my wife before the watching audience of 800 people. Uh, in layman's language or in poetic language, this is the promise I made to Ivan, my wife of 18 years. For better or worse, till death do us part, I love you with every beat in my heart. For better or worse, till death do us part, I love you with every beat in my heart. And that's, that's the commitment I made to Jesus Christ even before I met Ivan. Of course, in that, in a short speech that I gave up after I got married, and that was in fact the first message of mine that my wife was listening to, uh, even though we sort of grew up together, he had, she had never heard me preach at, until that point, though I had been preaching from the age of 16. I got married at the age of 26. Uh, I had been, I'd been 10, 10 years and then at the age of, uh, from 16 onwards, uh, at the age of 26, I got married and Ivan, my wife, would be listening to me speak. So I said, uh, this is what I said. I said, uh, Ivan is the greatest thing that happened to me other than the Lord Jesus Christ. She's the greatest thing that happened to me other than the Lord Jesus Christ. There I uh, made a disclaimer that my commitment to Jesus was prior to my commitment to Ivan. And that commitment to Ivan was for better or worse, till death do us part, I love you with every beat in my heart. And the Bible, uh, you know, says throughout scripture, and even as I begin the study, I just want to open a uh, uh, Bible Gateway. Okay, let me do that Bible Gateway, and I I want you to I want to read Jeremiah chapter two and verse two. Jeremiah two. Jeremiah two and verse two. Okay, here we go. Uh, go and announce directly to Jerusalem. Jeremiah two and verse two. Go and announced directly to Jerusalem that this is what the Lord says, I remember the loyalty of your youth, I remember the loyalty of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness in a land not sown. You know, God is uh, talking to Israel, his bride, his spiritual bride. He says, I remember the loyalty of your youth, your love as a bride. God compares his relationship with Israel to a spiritual romance. Uh, to a marriage, to a spiritual marriage. And he says, in that marriage, I remember there was a time when you were loyal. I remember the loyalty of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness. Okay, how, Not how you followed me into a five-star hotel, not how you followed me into a desert oasis, not you, how you followed me when during the times when I, you know, when I just, you know, kept doing miracle after miracle or preventing you from plague after plague. You know, the ten plagues, God prevented Israel from each plague. But even when I walked into the wilderness, not easy, 
not convenient, not comfortable, but nevertheless you walked. Uh, in, followed me into the wilderness in a, in a land that uh, not sown. So, our because if we are so committed to uh, the, the the covenant that we make to our wife, to our spouses. Uh, based on God's word, because the Bible teaches marriage covenant is a, a, a marriage is a covenant that's a teaching from the Bible. How much more, you know, commitment level should we show to to God Himself? And and here in Jeremiah two, and not just Jeremiah two, in several other passages, Hosea is another book, uh, First Corinthians, Apostle Paul talks about it, um, Book of Revelation in, calls us the bride of Christ. So several places in scripture where, the, where God is calling us to be his bride and we need to be committed to him come what may. So just as we stay committed to our spouse through the highs and lows of marriage, the same way the Bible calls us that we must, be, we must have a come what may commitment, a come what may commitment to Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's a message that I want to underline this morning. Uh, I'm sitting here in my uh, office room, which is also a part of the, the rented base that I live in, in Hyderabad. Uh, and I'm bringing this broadcast to you. Uh, I've not turned on the fan because I want the audio to be uh, clear. Uh, the fan noise might reduce the clarity, so that's why I'm sweating. Uh, and also, I'm, I will be looking in different directions because this, this side is Instagram Live. Uh, in front of me is my computer where my sermon notes are and on this side is YouTube live and directly now uh, that is Facebook live so just kindly bear with me and also a separate device uh, in so that we can make that available and that recording also will have uh, has a, a much superior audio recording facility so come along with me now I'm going to share uh, this message which God has put in my heart which I have titled, Come What May Commitment. And that's the commitment that we need at this time during this corona pandemic. Uh, I'm 45 years old. I've never seen a crisis like this in the world in all these 45 years. I was, other day I was talking to my uh, Chitti, who lives in Chennai, and I asked her, uh, you know, I was about a few days old when she got married uh, in 1974, if I remember right uh, I was just a few days old uh, so I asked it have do you remember a time like this and she said no I, I don't remember a time like this in our world so that's the saying of many people in the world so but at this time the message of God is very very clear the message of God is very very clear we need to show come what may commitment to him I know there are so many lives going on in the world right now and there are people who are giving you a date when this is going to end and when everything is going to be normal. That's what I pray for. I'm, I'm not a psycho. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not a prandhan as we say in Malayalam. I, I'm not a vattu. Uh, you know, I'm not mad. I'm not paithiyam as we say in Tamil. Uh, but uh, I also pray for this to end. <clears throat> but at the same time, I want to tell you, <clears throat> as an as a imperfect Bible teacher, doing what I can in this one life I have, I want to tell you that this book which I hold in my hand, the Bible, clearly says, clearly calls us for a come what may commitment. This book which I hold in my hand calls us for a come what may commitment. So if you have a Bible and you're sitting for this live broadcast or if you'll join in later, whenever, you know, I want you to turn to the back of your Bible and note these passages down. Because one of the goals of our ministry is not to create disciples of Jesus, to create come what may f commitment level followers of Jesus. Uh, followers of Jesus with the come what may commitment level. So I want you to share these passages. I know all you need to do is you don't need to be a preacher. You just need to just read. You just need to read this passage along with people and they will get it. You don't need to be a silver tongued Bible teacher to explain th that these passages I'm going to read with you this morning is calling you for a come what may commitment. All right, let's begin. And I'm going to give you a series of eyes and some of you watching online, uh, if you would be kind to put these as notes 
uh, down in the comments area, I would be grateful. And that will help follow people who will you know, follow this broadcast later on. And some of them might just rewind and just uh, follow us. Uh, so if you can put these keywords and references as comments, I'd be grateful. Uh, all right, the first uh, story, which in the Bible that calls us for a come what may commitment, idol worshippers refuses story. Idol worshippers, idol worship refuses story. Daniel chapter 3, 16 onwards. Daniel chapter 3, 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. You know, I don't need to preach on this. You know, th these are self-explanatory passages. Daniel 3, 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, prisoners of war in Babylon, pagan king ruling over them. He calls them to idol worship. And, uh, he, and there's a punishment if they don't do that. And what do they say? King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. We are thrown into the blazing furnace. That's a punishment if they do not worship uh, uh, if, you, if they do not wor worship, uh, if they refuse idol worship, that's the punishment. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able. Okay, that's right theology. Okay, no matter what the crisis is, as I've said in other Bible studies, at this point in time, even as I speak to you, my God, your God, my God, Yahweh, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, if they, if God speaks, I'm sorry, if God speaks one word, if the Trinity speaks one word, if Jesus speaks one word, God the Father speaks one word, instantly the corona pandemic can end. Instantly the trouble in your life can end. Instantly the disease in your family can end. Instantly. We believe that. There is no question about it. We are not doubting it. We believe He is able. He, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. All right, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. So that's a faith that we have, that when we pray, the Lord is able to do what we ask him to do. He is able, and he can, he will deliver us. But look at verse 18, Daniel 3, 18. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty. We will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. So that was like call for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that they had to worship the image of gold the King Nebuchadnezzar set up and they say, we want you to know we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up even if our God does not. So that's even if he doesn't, we will still be faithful to him till death. So that's the call. No need for an elaborate message. We just have to read this passage and understand. Uh, that is, now this is Daniel 3, 16 through 18. Uh, we have a whole bunch of believers whom I call as the John 3, 16 believers, which means you know, they heard the gospel, they heard John 3, 16, God so loved the world that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And they have remained as babies. They have not grown up. They remained as baby John 3, 16 Christians. But your goal and my goal as preachers of God's word, as disciples of Jesus Christ, must be to do what we can in the one life that we have. Do what we can in the one life that we have to convert John 3, 16 baby Christians to Daniel 3, 16 through 18 mature believers. Believers who will come to, who will graduate to a come what may level Christianity. All right. Uh, I also did some background study on this passage. The fire that uh, Nebuchadnezzar promised to put them inside, uh, if they didn't worship the golden 
image of gold that he set up uh, was about 900 degrees centigrade, 900 degrees centigrade. Um, that's, that's the kind of temperature that, uh, so, but the thing is, I want you to see the commitment level fire inside the heart of these three guys, which is greater than 900 degrees centigrade. That's the fire of commitment. The fire of commitment. Okay, this king says, if you don't worship me, I'm going to throw you into this 900 degrees centigrade fire. But the commitment level these three guys have inside is greater than the 900 degree centigrade fire. It's, he says, our God is able to save us even if he doesn't. We are not going to bow before this golden statue that you have set up. All right. What is the blessing of a come what may kind of faith? Here in this case, we know God protected them. I'm not saying every time you have a come what may commitment, God will protect you. But here in this case, God protected them. Does it happen all the time? Absolutely not. Uh, does it? Absolutely not. So that's the first uh, passage that I want to talk about. The second come what may commitment level passage. We're talking about Bible passages, which is calling us for a come what may commitment. We are looking at a series of eyes. All right, the second eye, Israel, Israel's rescuer's story. Israel's rescuer's story. I'm calling Esther as a Israel rescuer. I'm calling Esther as a Israel rescuer. You know, we are we are a generation that gives nicknames to different people. <clears throat> uh, MS Dhoni is called Tala uh, uh, in in Chennai Super King circles, and the the Tamil Nadu fans of MS Dhoni call him as Tala. They call Suresh Raina as Chinatala, <clears throat> Suresh Raina Chinatala. We all have different nicknames for different people we love. And the book of Esther, I want to give her a name. She's an Israel rescuer. And her story calls us for a come what may commitment. Israel rescuer. Number two, Israel rescuer. Okay, Israel rescuer. Esther chapter 4, 15 through 16. Esther chapter 4, 15 through 16. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Okay, Esther sent this message to Mordecai, okay, her cousin, Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night and day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. And when this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. The second I want to talk about, Israel rescuer story. Second Bible passage that's calling us for a come what may level of commitment. Esther chapter 4, 15 and 16, where, God, where Esther is speaking to Mordecai and where she's going to go to the king of the land and Ask him, you know, uh, put, you know, go and make a request of him not to wipe out the Jews. Uh, well, those days the kings had many wives and concubines, so the queen or the concubine or, or the or the sexual partner of the king couldn't just barge in to his door, into his room. Uh, I know the situation is uh, different right now, and even our top leaders. Uh, they have one wife. Uh, uh, recently, I bought a book uh, by Michelle Obama, uh, the wife of uh, Barack Obama. Uh, her autobiography, one of the most talked about autobiography uh, written in recent times in the secular world. A well-written book. I'm, I do not agree with the pol political philosophy or uh, many of the actions of Barack Obama, but he had a very strong family life where he loved his wife and his loved his daughters. And Michelle Obama could, even though you, Barack Obama, you know, was U.S. president for eight years. During those years, I'm sure Michelle Obama could have just barged into his room. Uh, even I don't think uh, Obama would have minded it if, if uh, well, he was doing a press conference before the watching world with all the big media uh, mics in front of him. You know, if Michelle had come and put her head in front and, you know, mention something to him. I don't think Barack Obama would have minded it at all. You know, he's a cool guy. 
But here, you know, if Esther went without permission to meet her husband and asked him, you know, requested him to risk to stop his order, you know, to 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 spoke. If he spoke about uh, the fact that the people of Israel, the Jewish people, had to be def had to be rescued, you know, that would have got her into trouble. If the king called, it's fine. But the king didn't give her an appointment, and sa she says, "I'm going to go and and I want a team to pray for me." I want Mordecai and, uh, you know, I, I'm going to pray in Susa. Uh, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink for three days and three nights. And my attenders will also do so. My friends here in this palace, my attendants, uh, I'm sure she had a team of uh, girls taking care of her, okay, doing beauty treatments on her and making her look pretty as she you know, dressed up to every time she went to appear before her husband. But when this is done, I will go to the king. Even though it's against the law, I will go to the king. And if I perish, I perish. Which means, you know, look at this woman. You know, uh, she says, we're going to pray for one matter for three long days. It's going to be a fasting prayer. We are not going to eat or drink. We are going to pray night and day. So they are fasting two things here. Two things they fast. One, they fast food. They, verse 16, Esther chapter 4 verse 16. They do not, they're not going to eat or drink for three days. And they're also no, no, they're going to uh, they're going to they're going to do this night and day for three days. That means they're not they're going to fast sleep as well. They're going to fast soup, they're going to fast sleep. Soup and sleep fasting, three days, one point pr fasting prayer, and that is that God would consider Esther's request favorably that he would that the king of the land would not wipe out the Jews. But even after the, the fasting, 72 hour fasting, you know, Esther says, there's a good chance the king might actually write, a, uh, uh, actually support a law that will wipe out the Jews. And we all might die because we are Jewish people. And she, that's why she has adds that line in Esther chapter four, verse 16. And if I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. Sound theology, right theology, theology that is found throughout the Bible. And as I said, if you have followed me in the study, that, that's the theology in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18 as well. And here it is in the book of Esther, chapter 4, 15 through 16. Sound, correct theology, which means you can pray about a matter at the end of the day we need to be submissive to God's will. We know what happened. She got a favorable answer. Uh, you know, that's nothing. You know, miracles happen, which happen are child's play for God. You know, that's, that really should not be our focus because miracle is a child's play for God. But what is more important is how our character changes and how we become more and more like Jesus as the days and years roll. And though our flesh screams that things should be the, you know, the uh, things should be according to our way. Our, though we are all people who effectively say, whether, whether we say it out through words or not, we all say effectively, we say this, my way or the highway. We all have this philosophy, my way or the highway. My way or the highway. I want to tell you, the call of the Bible throughout is we must be submissive to the will of God and come to a level where we all can say, Lord, I am ready for a come what may commitment. Yes, you can do this miracle. This is a prayer point I prayed for, sacrificing, saying no to food and saying no to sleep for three straight days. Not just me, but my friends. Not just Mordecai, but his friends. Okay, at least two prayer groups praying for the same reason and for the fact that, Lord, you're going to do this. In fact, that's what, been, that's what has, has been happening all this last one plus month of lockdown. Several fellowships, small fellowships, big fellowships have been praying for the pandemic to, pandemic to stop. But you know what? The pandemic will stop when God wants it to stop. We must keep praying. We always must be subject. We always must say, if I perish in this pandemic, so be it. No problem. My God is able to heal me or heal our world or heal my family, heal my city from this pandemic. But if I perish, I perish.
not just about the pandemic, anything, any matter in, in our life. All right. So that's the second story. And let's move on to the third story. And that's coming from uh, this Bible passage. Just give me a moment. All right. Uh, the first I uh, was the I from Daniel's uh, friends, Daniel chapter 3. The second I was from Esther chapter 4. And the third I is uh, from Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, 16 through 18. Habakkuk chapter 3, 16 through 18. Invasion time insanity. This is the third I. Invasion time insanity. So this is just few days before the great Babylonian inv invasion. There are some years that you need to remember if you're a sincere Bible student, if you're a Bible student who, who, who is always learning. And I, I want to be that one. I want to be a Bible student. I went in, from 98 to 2001. I was a MDiv student of Southern Asia Bible College, now called CGLD uh, in Bangalore. And then uh, parallelly, I also did a course called MA in Christianity in Mysore University. So in 2001, I had two theological degrees. And then 2009, uh, uh, my college professors invited me to join the doctoral program. In 2014, I graduated with the doctoral ministry program. Uh, uh, even though I have three theological degrees or three Bible-related degrees, I, wanna, I'm, I ask myself, I want to be learning always. And that's why during this lockdown time, uh, and not just this lockdown time, I, I also try to do it. Uh, study uh, as much as possible, but we have more time now. Uh, all these study Bibles are out, and I'm I'm reading. And the, and when you look at these study Bibles, they they talk about some important dates you must remember. And one date is 586 BC, approximately 500 years before Jesus, 600 years before Jesus was uh, came into this world, uh, uh, before the incarnation. 586 BC, the Babylonian invasion took place. Okay, 722 BC, about 700 years before Jesus came. The northern kingdom was invaded by the Assyrians, okay? And 586 BC, that is 722 BC, and this is 7, 586 BC, two important dates, all right? Uh, 586 BC, the Babylonian invasion took place. But just before that, invasion time insanity. Okay, I'm giving you a series of eyes. Invasion time insanity, okay? There is a confession. Confession by a Bible prophet. Invasion time insanity story. Okay, and who's that prophet? Prophet Habakkuk. So Prophet Habakkuk ministered in the few months, few weeks, in the southern part of Israel as Israel was about to be invaded by the Babylonian army. And what did he say? Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Again, familiar scriptures. I'm sure many people have quoted this to you already, but I'm giving you the context of it, the historical context of it. We must understand what that Bible passage meant then and there before we interpret it for us here and now. We must ask what that Bible passage meant then and there before we interpret it for us here and now. Okay, then we will not make a major blunder when it comes to Bible interpretation. So Habakkuk chapter 3, 16 through 18 says, I heard and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound, delay crept in my bones, my legs trem trembled. You know, he is really, you know, concerned. His heart is pounding, his lips were quivering at the sound. Given the context, the sound of the marching Babylonian armies. Because before, if you carefully follow that story in the in scripture, the Babylonians were putting a siege around Jerusalem. It's not like they suddenly came from far and attacked. They came close to Jerusalem and they were waiting outside Jerusalem. They, 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 are, they are surrounding Jerusalem. The Babylonian armies are surrounding Jerusalem. And uh, you can hear the the neighing of their horses. Uh, maybe you can hear some of the loud parties and blasphemies against the living God. So he says in verse 16, Habakkuk 3.16, I heard and my heart 
pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. What, the, what sound? The Babylon army is surrounding Jerusalem. There are blasphemies, the neighing of their horses, and the, the uh, you know, if, if this was a contemporary war, you know, the gunshots in the air, the gunshot in the air, and all those sounds. Okay, delay crept into my bones. My legs trembled, yet I patiently waited for the day of calamity. Day of calamity, Habakkuk 3.16, the Babylonian invasion. Day of calamity, the Babylonian invasion. The day to come on a nation invading us. Okay, so that's 3.16. Uh, of course, 17 is very popular and we quote it all the time. But I want you to understand, read 16, which gives us the context for, uh, for this uh, key verse, Habakkuk 3.17. 3.17 says, Though the fig tree does not bud, there are no grapes on the wines. Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there is, there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Now, why would there be no fig tree that does not bud or grapes on the wines, olive crop failing, fields producing no food, no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls? Uh, now, this verse, Habakkuk 3.17 talks about the main source of financial income for the people of Israel. The main source of financial income. It came from their fig tree. It came from the grapes. They, some of the finest grapes in the entire planet grew in the promised land. The crop, olive crop. All right, sheep. They had a flourishing animal husbandry industry. Now, my secular background is agriculture engineering, so these are some terms that I'm familiar with. No sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stall. So from animal husbandry and from agriculture came their main financial, uh, uh, main, uh, uh, from, from that they earned their money. But both those industries are suffering. Why? Because of the Babylonian blockade, which verse 16 talks about. Habakkuk is ministering few days before the Babylonian captivity. Before the, because of the Babylonian blockade, there is an agri agricultural uh, problem, there is an animal husbandry problem, because these Babylonians are blocking everything. Even if they produce something, you know, they always produce extra, which the other nations bought. And uh, you know that's how they got their money, and that's how the families made money. But here, because of the Babylonian armies blocking you know, southern part of Israel, Judah, or surrounding Judah, surrounding especially Judah's capital, Jerusalem. Nothing could be done. But what, does, but what does our prophet say? Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18. We're looking at Bible stories that call us for a come what may commitment. We're the third story. In each story, we, we want to remember, make it memorable by uh, using an I letter. So this is Invasion time insanity story. Invasion time insanity story. Habakkuk 3.18 Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Now, I am in the full-time ministry. And I want to tell you. I want to tell you. Even if we don't receive any offerings this month. And God, I, I praise God, you know, as an evangelist. As a full-time evangelist, as a person who doesn't ha pastor a church, God has met our needs uh, this month, and I praise God. But I don't serve God for the offerings that I receive. I serve Him because He is God. But should there be a time when you know things change? Okay, I want to tell I, I I I tell my family. In fact, my wife and I tell each other we will still serve God with what we have. Because we never came to the ministry looking at the money that we are going to get. In fact, when I started preaching as a Bible college student of Southern Asia Bible College, uh, I'm, uh, I used to go for weekend ministry. For the first time after my preaching, I received Pentecostal handshakes. And I, I, after the handshake, I found some money in, inside me. Thank you, Brother Duke, for sharing the word. And then I, in the handshake, some, they gave us an offering. And no, I used to. That was a time when I was dating my wife was uh, working in Apollo hospitals in Chennai. 
uh, we, we were talking, we were considering each other, we were about, we were thinking of getting married and I, I told her, I never knew that if you preached God's word, people would give you money because I was, I was a little, I was a little, I mean, I, I, I was, I, I, n I never looked, thought about these things when I got into the ministry. I just, I was just passionate. I just wanted to go and preach God's word. And I was so excited for the opportunity. And I told her, see, I, I didn't know that you, people will give you offering if you go, if you receive, if you said okay to the invitation and, and preach. And uh, with that money, I would get, get her some small gifts. So whether the, the money comes in or not, okay, you might be working in a corporate world. You might be, uh, uh, you know, working with the government. You might be working, uh, you might be having a business. So are you able to say during this corona pandemic time and during any time, whether the income comes or not, that's, that's the context of Habakkuk 3, 16 and 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Not, you know, I know some of us will not blaspheme Jesus during this time. Some of us will not uh, become pluralists and say all religions are one of the same. Or some of us will not become atheists. But here in Habakkuk 3.18, the Bible is very clear. The, 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 the prophet says, I'm going to rejoice in my Lord. So I'm going to have a spiritual high where I'm going to, during this time of crisis, and I'm going to rejoice in it, not just, you know, tolerate my God, not just tolerate my God, but rejoice in Him. Habakkuk 3.18. Be joyful in Him. Be joyful in Him. That's the third story. Uh, during these days of... Uh, many WhatsApp forwards. There's one WhatsApp forward video which I've never forgotten that came in the year 2015 and I tried to save that video somewhere in my computer and I look at it now and then. And that's, uh, it's talking, it was talking about an incident on February 12th, 2015 when the Islamic State of Iraq released a report on their online magazine called The Beak showing photos of 21 Egyptian Coptic Christian Construction workers. These guys were construction workers. They were Egyptians. They were from the Coptic Christian faith. They were believers. They were kidnapped. They were kidnapped. And you know what happened to them? They died. I'm going to stop with these three stories. I'm going to stop with these three stories. Uh, think of that video. Think of that video that you all, we all saw. A Coptic Christians video that came to our WhatsApp several, three months ago. Uh, uh, sorry, in 2015. Uh, maybe they prayed for God's rescue. You know that what video I'm talking about, how the 12 uh, or the, the small bunch of Coptic Christians kneeling by the beachside and the Islamic uh, State terrorists chopping their neck off, killing, killing them. You know what happened to them? You know what happened to them? The neck was chopped. I'm sure they prayed for rescue, but their prayer would have been in the lines of Daniel chapter 3, Esther chapter 4, and Habakkuk chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, Esther chapter 4, Habakkuk chapter 3. I'm sure their prayers would have been along those lines. Even if, you know, I believe God is able to rescue us, these Coptic Christian believers, Egyptian believers, even if God wants to rescue us, you know, God can rescue us. God can definitely rescue us. But even if He doesn't, let the waves come and sweep over us. Or let these guys chop us. You know, they could have wished that a big wave would come and distract these terrorists and they would be able to run away because this was along the beach. They could have prayed, Lord, let a big giant wave come. You sent a giant fish to rescue Jonah. You're the same yesterday, today, forever. Send a giant wave to distract these terrorists so that we can run away and we will all reach our family safe. But even if you don't send a giant wave that will distract these uh, Islamic terrorists, ISIS terrorists who are about to chop our neck off as we kneel down by this beach. I'm talking about this, this video which came to our WhatsApp in 2015, five years ago. Even if that doesn't happen, even if that doesn't happen, Lord, we're ready to serve you.
till death. We are not going to, we are not going to say no to you when you call us to be martyrs, in effect. All right, these three stories from chapter. Uh, okay, these three eyes. I'm going to leave you with three eyes, and I'm going to close. In fact, I have seven, but that's fine. Uh, we will finish our study here. So the f the first eye is uh, idol worshippers refuse a story, Daniel chapter three. Okay, that story calls us for a come out my commitment. Second eye, Israel rescue a story. That story in Esther chapter four calls us for a come out my commitment. And then the third eye is. Habakkuk confession, invasion, time, insanity story that also calls us for a come what my commitment. Habakkuk chapter 3, 16 through 18. And if you are thinking for a, even for a moment whether this is in the New Testament or not, I want you to just, you know, go to BibleGateway.com as I finish the study. Go to BibleGateway.com, okay, and in the search bar put, put the word overcomes, okay. Uh, and uh, overcomes. You just put the word overcomes. Or uh, one who endures, overcomes, endures. Any of those words, endures, overcomes. All right. Uh, and then find out the number of, the, 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 there's so many times that the book of Revelation calls about it. He who overcomes will get the crown. He who overcomes. Or in other words, he who has a come what may commitment. He who overcomes gets rewarded. Book of Revelation. That is a message of the book of Revelation. So I'm not talking about a Old Testament truth, but I'm talking about something which the New Testament also talks about. All right. Repeatedly, to him who overcomes. That is a phrase repeated in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. He who has a hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes. Again, the context is persecution. They all believed God could save them from persecution. But Revelation ends with this. this uh, the book of Revelation repeatedly teaches this. He, to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which, in the, which is in the midst of paradise of God. To him he who overcomes, Revelation 2, 7. Or to him who has a come what may commitment. Put, if we can put that in the context of our message. Revelation 2, 7. And then Revelation 2, 11. He who has and hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Revelation 2, 11. Okay, this is very significant. Very significant. Revelation 2, 11 says. Revelation 21 7 and 8. Revelation 21, 7 and 8 says, Hell punishment is second death. Hell punishment is second death. And Revelation 2, 11, the same book, Revelation 21, 7 and 8 says, Hell punishment is second death. Punishment, ongoing torment in the lake of fire is second death. Okay? And Revelation 2, 11 says, He who has a ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be Hurt by the second death. Which means the word of God is saying we need to show a come what may commitment for us to go to heaven. Otherwise, if we are stubborn in the sin of not showing the come what may kind of commitment that we need to show, which the Bible consistently calls us to, we will go to hell. That's why. Revelation 2.11 says, He who has a ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So this is a call for all believers. He who overcomes, or he who shows a come what may commitment, shall not be hurt by the second death. So the book of Revelation is very clear. And this is just two references. In fact, I believe the same thing is there in Revelation 2.17, uh, uh, Revelation 2.26-28, Revelation 3 5, Revelation 3 12, Revelation 3 21. All right. To him who overcomes, or to him who shows come what may commitment. So that's a call in the end of the New Testament as well. In between, I've skipped a few passages. 
three passages from the Old Testament and all the way to the end of the New Testament, post-cross, as I am using these terms to appeal to some of you may be believing hypergrace lies which give us stepmotherly treatment to Old Testament passages or passages before the cross of Jesus Christ. Wrongly so. But even if you believe only in post-cross passages, this is post-cross, Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 2 is post-cross and it's calling us for a come what may level of commitment. All right, we have studied God's word for about 45 minutes, so I need to end. Uh, and I believe uh, God's message to us is very clear. So I want you to kneel down wherever you are hearing this broadcast, uh, whether through Facebook or whether through YouTube, or whether through uh, any medium. I want you to kneel down and say, Lord, this Saturday morning, 25th of April 2020, will be a significant day when, wherein I commit myself for a come what may commitment. Yes, the bills are not paid. Yes, the, the disease has not yet gone. I know believers, I know believers right now who, are, who have the coronavirus. And we are praying for God's healing upon them. But even if he doesn't heal, I'm, I'm calling us, even if our loved ones do not get healed, let's come, into a, come to a commitment level which says, come what may, I'm not going to leave this Jesus. Because, you know, we first of all didn't choose him for the, for the gifts that he, give, he gave us, but because he is who he is. The God who thought about us before the foundation of the world. Even before we came into our mother's womb, he was dreaming about us. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. And he, had a grand, he has a grand, glorious, wonderful plan for us. And that plan will unfold when we show this level of come what may commitment. A miracle might happen, will happen, uh, if it is his will, or we might perish. as the fall. But we need to just keep going. So will you make that commitment? Will you put a hand over your heart? Hand over your heart and say, Lord, as you kneel down, I wanna, I'm, I'm committing myself for a come what may commitment right now. I'm sorry for not having that level of commitment. But right now, I want to have that come what may commitment. I'm committing myself, Lord. Forgive me for the times of shallow commitment. Forgive me for the times of fair weather commitment. Forgive me right now. Wash me right now. Come what may commitment. Whether I suffer loss or whether I die, no matter what happens, I'm not going to let my commitment levels slip up. Put your hand over your heart and say, Lord, say that right now, even as I pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for this time of studying your word that we had as a small group, people drawn from different places in the world. I am sitting here in a Hyderabad in our office, in my office come residence. Uh, Lord, there are people who have joined me live via Instagram, via Facebook, via YouTube. And uh, we, I want to thank you for this time of studying your word. And I pray that you will bring us all to a come what may level of commitment. We forgive us for the times when we have been shallow. But Lord, at this prayer time, we also take a commitment to impact others to come to this level. Read these passages. Read Daniel 3. Read Esther chapter 4, read Habakkuk chapter 3 and these go through this message once again and share this with our children, uh, our loved ones who, whom we are talking to during this lockdown and not just that, pass this message on because we want to, Lord, be an instrument in your hands to raise a come what may commitment level believers in a world which is bringing the quality of believers low, a world full of fierce wolves, which Acts chapter 20 talks about. Fierce wolves, which goes around fooling people. You won't have any disease, you won't have any death and such rubbish. In a world full of fierce wolves, false teachers slash false teachers, which wants to bring down the quality of believers, believers who are on the road to eternal hell, believers who will Believe I won't die, I won't have any disease and believe us with such shallow commitment. Lord, we want to be your agents of, we want to be used as Bible teachers who will, Lord, broadcast this truth with a passion 
through our generation, O oh Lord. Help us. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I also have an activity. I also have an activity. Uh, go to YouTube, you know, go to Google and look for that Coptic Christians martyrdom video, which surfaced in 2015. Coptic Christians martyrdom video. And I want that, I want you to show it to your children. I know it's very ghastly, it's gruesome, uh, but I want you to show that video if your kids have not seen it, uh, if your loved ones have not seen it. You know, it, I'm sure it's there hiding somewhere. It's, I'm sure it's there. I, in fact, if, I, if you don't find it anywhere, you ask me, I can even send that to you. I'll send a link to that video. I have downloaded and kept it. And there's one video, Coptic Christians getting massacred and they were lining up, and they were lined up in the beach and massacred by ISIS. So don't never forget the story. I'm sure they prayed, God rescue us. Send a big wave and distract these uh, ISIS terrorists and so that we can run away but no wave came they all died they had a come what may level of commitment L show that show that to your kids so that they will have an unforgettable lesson about having a come what may level of commitment thank you uh, if you are new to our ministry if you do not know who I am uh, or anything about our ministry my name is Duke Jairaj uh, I God enabled my wife and I to start a ministry uh, called Grabbing the Google Generation from Gehenna Mission, G4 Mission. And this ministry uh, is functioning from 2006. Uh, if you want to know more about our ministry, go to uh, Google and search my name, Duke Jairaj. Uh, my second name is spelled as J-E-Y-A-R-A-J. You'll land into a lot of resources because we are on uh, YouTube, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, and we have a website called dukewords.com. D U K E V O R G and find more details. If you'd like to reach me via WhatsApp, most welcome. Uh, and my number would be triple eight six zero four zero six zero five. Triple eight six zero four zero six zero five. I live in India, so the country code would be nine one. And please send me a WhatsApp message and we have a WhatsApp one way message or ministry resources distribution list and I'll be happy to include uh, you in that. Uh, our prayers are with you at this time of crisis and God bless you. Thank you for following us.